Good morning students. Welcome back to the chemistry class. I hope you all are safe and sound at your home and taking good care of yourself. Today I will continue with the same chapter 2 that is chemical changes and reactions. Students, in my last video we completed two types of chemical changes. Combination reaction or the synthesis reaction and second was decomposition reaction. Today we will start with the third type of the chemical reaction that is displacement reaction. Can you tell me what is displacement reaction? Displacement reaction is a chemical change in which a more active element displaces a less active element from its salt solution. So this is also known as, known as substitution reaction. This reaction can be represented by a general chemical equation that is AB plus C will give AC plus B. Here element C has displaced the element B from the compound AB. Why? Because element C is more reactive than element B. And hence element C displaces B from AB compound. We can say that C is the displacing element and B is the element which is being displaced by C. Okay children? Students, what is this showing? This is showing the activity series of the elements. Over here you have the metal series and on the right hand side you have the non-metal series. The activity series of the elements shows the chemical activity from the top to the bottom. As we move from top towards the bottom, the reactivity decreases downwards. So, the most active element will be at the top place and the least active will be at the bottom. If we talk about the metals, most active metal is potassium which is placed at the top place. And the least active metal is a platinum which is placed at the bottom. So as we are moving down the series, the chemical activity starts decreasing. Now let's check the non-metals. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. So they are placed, they are ordered in the decreasing reactivity. The first is the most active, that is the fluorine is the most active non-metal and then second is chlorine, third is bromine and the least active non-metal is iodine. So for the displacement reactions, this activity series will be used. The more reactive element will be displacing the less reactive element from its salt solution. We have done this in class 8 also. Right children? So we will understand the chemical reactions with the help of this activity series. Now let's do the chemical equations based on the displacement reaction. The first is the solution of copper sulphate is there and few pieces of zinc is added to the copper sulphate solution. As you all know copper sulphate is blue colored solution the blue color of the solution gradually fades and soon the solution becomes colorless at the same time reddish brown particles settle down in the beaker students can you guess the products the products are zinc sulfate and copper zinc sulfate aqueous means solution of the copper sulfate which is colorless and copper as a residue which is reddish brown in color okay what is the reason behind it because zinc is more reactive than the copper zinc displaces copper from the copper sulfate solution and hence forms zinc sulfate and copper as a residue students let us check this in the activity series of the elements okay the first example is copper sulfate reacting with zinc forming zinc sulfate and copper here zinc displaces copper from the copper sulfate solution why because zinc is more active than the copper we can see zinc is above 
copper that's why zinc displaces copper from the copper sulfate solution okay let's do the second example based on displacement reaction here we have taken the dilute sulfuric acid and added a piece of magnesium ribbon what is observed brisk effervescence takes place of a gas which burns with a pop sound on bringing a burning match stick near the mouth of the test tube students can you guess the gas which gas is evolved and which salt is produced during this reaction so here magnesium sulfate is formed and hydrogen gas is evolved due to the hydrogen gas we get brisk effervescence of it now this gas can be tested if we bring a match stick near the mouth of the test tube this gas hydrogen gas burns with a pop sound please remember this what is the reason behind it magnesium is more active than the hydrogen so magnesium displaces hydrogen from sulfuric acid and thus forms magnesium sulfate and hydrogen gas evolved let us quickly check this in the activity series of the elements magnesium reacting with sulfuric acid gives magnesium sulfate and hydrogen gas here magnesium is displacing hydrogen okay so magnesium is on top of the hydrogen that's why magnesium displaces hydrogen from the sulfuric acid and it forms magnesium sulfate and hydrogen gas is released okay children now let's complete this third example okay over here chlorine gas is passed into the solution of potassium iodide the colorless solution will turn yellow brown can you name the products so look here when chlorine reacts with potassium iodide we get a solution of potassium chloride and iodine as a residue which gives yellow brown color okay yellow brown color is due to the iodine solid which is formed during the reaction so in this reaction what has happened chlorine displaces iodine from potassium iodide solution and forms potassium chloride and iodine and what is the reason behind this displacement because chlorine is more reactive than iodine if we look at the activity series of the elements then we will see chlorine on top of the iodine okay so that's why chlorine is more reactive than iodine so let's quickly check this in the activity series of the elements okay here we are dealing with the non metals chlorine reacting with potassium iodide gives potassium chloride and iodine so chlorine displaces iodine from the potassium iodide solution why because chlorine we can see it is above than the iodine so chlorine being more reactive than the iodine hence chlorine displaces iodine from potassium iodide solution students let's do the last chemical reaction that is double decomposition reaction it is also known as a double displacement reaction can you define double decomposition reaction the chemical reaction in which two compounds in the solution react to form two new compounds by mutual exchange of the radicals is known as double decomposition reaction or you can say the chemical reaction in which two compounds in solution state react to form two new compounds by mutual exchange of the ions radicals are what ions only okay so double decomposition reactions they are of two types precipitation reaction and a neutralization reaction by the word itself the precipitation reaction precipitate will be formed in this reaction okay and in the neutralization the acid will going to neutralize the base and form salt and water okay and precipitate reaction a chemical reaction in which the two compounds in the solution state they form an insoluble salt or a precipitate is formed as one of the products in the precipitation reaction okay now the general representation of the double decomposition reaction is ab uh, plus cd one compound and this is the other compound they react together 
and what happens the exchange of the radicals takes place and new compounds are formed ad and bc here a joins with the d okay and b joins with the c so we have ad a new compound and 1 bc a new compound so this is a general representation of the double decomposition reaction okay children now let's start the first type of the double decomposition reaction that is precipitation reaction precipitation reaction means there will be insoluble salt formation after the reaction so how will you going to define precipitation reaction a chemical reaction in which two compounds in their aqueous state react to form an insoluble salt which is also known as a precipitate as one of the products so you will be getting as one of the products insoluble salt or the precipitate now there are two conditions for the precipitation reaction first is when both the reactants are in solution state okay second is in the reactant one is a gas and the other is in solution form then a precipitate will be formed okay children now let us understand the precipitation reaction with the help of the chemical equations okay the first chemical equation is when a solution of barium chloride is added to a solution of sodium sulfate what will be formed a white precipitate will be formed can you all guess what will be the products so when barium chloride solution reacts with the solution of sodium sulfate we get barium sulfate solid or a precipitate which is white in color okay and an aqueous solution of sodium chloride what has happened over here it it is a double decomposition reaction where barium has joined to the sulfate right and sodium has joined to the chlorine okay so barium sulfate white ppt white precipitate formation and a solution of sodium chloride is formed so this is a precipitation reaction a part of the double decomposition or a double displacement method is used okay now let us understand the second example of the precipitation reaction so h2s gas is passed into the solution of copper sulfate a black ppt of a black precipitate is formed can you guess the products we get a black precipitate of copper sulfide and sulfuric acid is formed so here what has reacted copper sulfate has reacted with the hydrogen sulfide producing insoluble product that is copper sulfide which will be black in color and sulfuric acid is formed here copper ion is going with the sulfide ion and hydrogen ion is going with the sulfate ion so here there is an exchange of ions or the radicals and hence this reaction is a part of the double displacement method and this is a precipitate which is forming in this reaction now let us do few more examples based on the precipitation reaction okay children over here see silver nitrate solution is taken and to it we have added dilute hydrochloric acid after the reaction a white curdy precipitate will be formed can you guess the name of the products so as a product we will get silver chloride and nitric acid now over here silver chloride will be an insoluble product or you can say it is a precipitate and the color of the precipitate is white curdy precipitate will be of the silver chloride okay now over here we can see that silver 
iron has attached to the chloride ion and forming silver chloride and hydrogen has attached to the nitrate ion and giving nitric acid so this is which method it is a double displacement method okay and giving a precipitate of silver chloride that is a precipitation reaction okay children now this next reaction will be very easy for you all here the solution of silver nitrate is taken and to it we have added solution of sodium chloride again what will be formed silver chloride that is a white curdy precipitate will be obtained and sodium nitrate will be formed so the reaction becomes silver nitrate plus sodium chloride solution they will give a white ppt of silver chloride and a solution of sodium nitrate okay children so silver ion attaches with the chloride ion and sodium ion attached with the nitrate ion so it is a double displacement or the exchange of the radicals are taking place and giving rise to the precipitate as well as a solution is it clear now let's check the fourth example here the dilute sulfuric acid solution is added to the solution of barium chloride what will be formed barium sulfate will be formed which will give a white precipitate and hydrogen chloride solution will be obtained over here barium ion has joined to the sulfate ion and hydrogen ion has joined with the chloride ion so this is a exchange of the ions taking place and hence this is a double displacement method where we are getting a precipitate of barium sulfate which is a very thick white precipitate okay please remember the names of the precipitate and the color of the precipitates okay children students in few double decomposition reactions instead of the precipitate we get the gas also okay so one of the products will be gas the other will be the aqueous solution is it clear so double decomposition reactions may also occur with the evolution of the gas let us check few examples here if we add dilute sulfuric acid to iron sulfide we get an offensive smelling gas or you can say rotten x smell gas is evolved after this reaction can you name that gas the gas is hydrogen sulfide which is having very offensive very unpleasant and rotten egg smelling gas the other product is iron sulfate which will be in the aqueous form so when sulfuric acid is added to the iron sulfide then we get iron sulfate aqueous and a gas is evolved that is hydrogen sulfide which will be smelling like a rotten egg okay children let's check the other example when dilute hydrogen chloride okay when dilute hydrogen chloride is added to the solid zinc sulfide again rotten x smelling gas is evolved and what is formed zinc chloride aqueous will be formed let's see here zinc chloride and a gas will be formed which is hydrogen sulfide and it is having very offensive odor of the rotten egg please remember the name of the gas that is hydrogen sulfide and it has offensive rotten egg smell is it clear so let's check the exchange of the ions here zinc attaches to the chloride ion and hydrogen ion attaches to the sulfide ion hence they produce zinc chloride and hydrogen sulfide gas is it clear same goes to the this one 
iron sulfide with the dilute sulfuric acid iron attaches itself with the sulfate ion giving iron sulfate and hydrogen ion attaches to the sulfide ion giving rise to the hydrogen sulfide gas okay children so in this way we can say that when dilute sulfuric acid or dilute hydrochloric acid is added to metal sulfide to any metal sulfide we get metal sulfate or we can get metal chloride and an offensive smelling gas of the rotten egg is evolved which is of the hydrogen sulfide okay children let us understand the neutralization reaction it is a type of a double displacement reaction and what is the definition the reaction between an acid and a base which forms salt and water only is known as neutralization reaction the general representation of the neutralization reaction is acid plus base will give salt and water only let's take an example NaOH sodium hydroxide and hydrogen chloride sodium hydroxide is a base and hydrogen chloride it's an acid when they react together they form salt and water salt will be NaCl and water will be formed okay so over here is the ionic form let us break them into the respective ions Na positive and OH negative hydroxyl ion okay here in HCl we get H positive hydrogen ion and chloride negative so when these ions they are reacting then Na positive joins with the Cl negative and hydrogen ion from the acid attaches to the hydroxyl ion of the base right so it will be forming na positive and cl negative nacl salt formation and h positive and oh negative will be forming water molecule is it clear now this neutralization reaction has been further categorized into two types when a soluble base reacts with an acid and second when insoluble base reacts with an acid See, soluble base is also known as alkali, means bases which can dissolve in water, they are known as soluble bases. And such type of soluble base, they are known as alkali. Over here, insoluble base means base which is not dissolving in water. So, they are termed as insoluble bases. Okay. So, there are two categories when a soluble base or the alkali reacts with an acid and second when insoluble base reacts with an acid. So these are few examples of the soluble base. Potassium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, ammonium hydroxide and here these are the insoluble bases lead oxide, copper oxide, lead hydroxide, copper hydroxide and so on. Let us understand the first category of the neutralization reaction. The neutralization reaction of a soluble base with an acid. Soluble base means we are talking about the alkali, base which can dissolve in water. So, this is a soluble base with an acid. Let's check the first example. Soluble base alkali that is potassium hydroxide reacting with a nitric acid. It will form salt and water, isn't it? So, potassium nitrate and water will be formed. Let's check it here. Potassium nitrate, KNO3 and water is formed. So, this is known as a neutralization reaction. Okay. Second example is sodium hydroxide reacting with the sulfuric acid. Now, sodium hydroxide is a alkali means soluble base base which can be dissolved in water okay so they will be forming sodium sulfate and water look here na2so4 sodium sulfate salt and water will be formed let's check the exchange of the ions na positive attaching with the sulfate ion so na 
positive attaching to the sulfate ion and hydrogen ion from the acid attaches with the hydroxyl ion of the base. That's why Na2SO4 sodium salt will be formed that is the sodium sulfate and water will be formed. So hence it is a neutralization reaction. Let us see the last example, example 3 for the neutralization reaction. Over here, ammonium hydroxide, which is an alkali, soluble base, reacts with the hydrogen chloride or the acid. What will be formed? Ammonium ion and chloride ion. So, ammonium chloride will be formed and H positive of the acid reacts with the hydroxyl ion of the base, forming the water. Okay, children? So, we get the salt, ammonium chloride and water will be formed. Is it clear? Now let us study the second category of the neutralization reaction. That is neutralization of an insoluble base with an acid. Over here we are using the insoluble base. Okay. So first example is when the base lead oxide is added to the nitric acid. What will going to form? It will going to form lead nitrate and water. Here lead ion attaches to the nitrate ion and hydrogen ion of the acid attaches to the oxygen of the base. Hence it forms lead nitrate and water is released. Let's check the second example. Here cupric oxide is a base which is reacting with the sulfuric acid and it will go into form. Can you tell me the products? It will form copper sulfate and water. Copper sulfate and water is formed. The third example, base is lead hydroxide and acid nitric acid. Now lead hydroxide reacting with the nitric acid, it forms lead nitrate and water. Here lead ion joins with the nitrate ion, okay, hence forming lead nitrate and hydrogen ion of the acid joins with the hydroxyl ion of the lead hydroxide. Okay. The last example is copper hydroxide base reacts with the sulfuric acid. What will be the product? It will be copper sulfate salt formation and water will be formed. So the copper ion attaches to the sulfate ion forming copper sulfate and hydrogen ion of the acid goes with the hydroxyl ion of the base forming the water. Students, do you know this neutralization reaction has many uses in our daily lives. Few of the uses we will be discussing over here. First is when someone is stung by a bee, bee is giving you what? Formic acid which creates pain. Okay, this formic acid can be neutralized with a base. Now, which base can be used? We can use a slake lime or a baking soda. Okay, what is slake lime? Slake lime is calcium hydroxide and baking soda, sodium hydrogen carbonate. So, we can use these base to relieve the pain caused by the formic acid of the B. Okay, children. Next, acid is accidentally spilling on the clothes or the body. Now this acid can be neutralized with a base. And which base we can use? We can use ammonia solution. And what is ammonia solution? Ammonia solution is ammonium hydroxide which is basic in nature. Okay. Third example is if the soil is becoming acidic. So acidic soil is not favorable for growing the crops. Right? So, it has to be neutralized by the base. So, which base we can add to the soil? We can add slaked lime to the soil. 
Slag lime is calcium hydroxide. Okay, students. The last one, if the stomach glands secretes excess hydrochloric acid, our stomach is producing hydrochloric acid, but if the secretion is too much of the hydrochloric acid in our stomach, so we will going to experience lot of pain. To neutralize this excess hydrochloric acid, we can take the base. Those base can be milk of magnesia, that is magnesium hydroxide. Okay, children, Mg. OH twice, right? Milk of magnesia, MgOH twice, or solution of sodium hydrogen carbonate, NaHCO three, which is the baking soda. So either the baking soda or MgOH twice, milk of magnesia, you can take. Both are basic in nature, and hence they will going to neutralize the excess acid present in the stomach. 